So hello and welcome to part one of my ENL MMD1 uh, Mini Micro Designer uh, demonstration and discussion. ENL was a company uh, back in the 70s that produced all kinds of digital and analog design aids. Uh, they also produced uh, a few different microprocessor trainers. Uh, this is one of the early 8080 based microprocessor trainers. This trainer is based on the 8080 CPU. There's an Intel 8080 CPU sitting here. Uh, the software by default is called Kex Keyboard Executive. The Kex monitor is stored in the 1702 EEPROM in the socket here. There's an expansion EEPROM here, which we won't be discussing today. The unit is octal based, uh, as was common in the early days. Uh, for the true hardcore 8080 person, uh, Octal actually made a lot of sense. Uh, it decodes very nicely into do something, register, register, uh, uh, you know, across the three octal parts uh, of the opcode. Uh, let me go ahead and power the unit up. A quick note, the four wires you see poking up here are uh, power connections to an expansion card, which will be discussed in part two of the video. So let me reach back here and power the system up and reset it. Uh, it typically needs a reset on power up. Uh, by resetting it, it came up at address, it's displaying address 003000 out of the local RAM, which is sitting here, and the random contents of that RAM. So uh, a, qu a quick discussion of uh, what's going on here. Those of you that know the 8080 and Z80 architecture know that you can address 64K of RAM. Uh, there is significantly less than that on the board here. The RAM is sitting here. Uh, and there are 256 I.O. ports available. How the KEX monitor actually works is this is port 0, port 1, and port 2. So this is not directly displaying the address bus or the data bus. It's displaying whatever's been output to port 0, port 1, and port 2. The KEX monitor outputs the current address that it's working on to these two sets of displays and the data it found to this set of displays. Uh, so, let's talk a little bit about the keyboard. Uh, we see there's 0 through 7. That's octal for you. Uh, the H key will set the high order address. The L key will set the low order address. The G key will start your program executing. Uh, the X key will either deposit and step to the next location or let you single step and read through memory. The R key does a hard reset of the 8080. And the A, B, and C keys are not used, although they are decoded. There's an expansion connector for the unit sitting here with buffers to buffer the expansion connector. This expansion connector can be added to the memory interface card, which will be demonstrated in video two. Uh, there were also some external peripherals that it could connect to. There was a 1702 EEPROM programmer. Uh, there was an interface that had ADDs and D to A's and a, a motor on it and uh, a photoresistor and those kind of things so that you could, you could do I.O. Uh, to real world hardware. There was the I.O. decoding logic and the keyboard interface. So the I.O. of course decoding logic is being used to decode the ports down here. Uh, the 1702 EEPROM containing KEX, some memory decoding logic for the small amount of SRAM that's sitting here, the 8080 microprocessor, its crystal and clock generator, some control logic as there always is, glue logic to bring the system together, and the LED drivers. So something you may notice here that I find quite interesting is pin 1 orientation here is to the left. Pin 1 orientation here is to the right. Pin 1 orientation is to the right. Pin 1 orientation is to the left. To the right again. And of course, so you need to be really careful when you work on these. There is no consistent pin 1 orientation. You need to look at the documents and document well if you take one apart before you put it back together. So in continuing the video, I'm going to go ahead and enter a small program and demonstrate the operation of the unit. Bring the power back up and reset the unit. It is reset to address 003000. That's the beginning of the SRAM. 
uh, the current contents, which is garbage, is displayed here. Let me go ahead and key in this simple program. So 315, doesn't look correct. 315, there it is. 315 store, 315, 315 store, 000, 000 store, 30, got a key bounce, 306, 306 store. 000 store 323 store 000 store 303 store 000 store 003 store so there's a couple of different ways to get the address set back to uh, 003000. One of them is to hit the reset key, which will restart the hex monitor and go there by default. I can also enter 003, deposit it as the high byte, 000, deposit it as the low byte, and we can see that I've done that. And let's recall the program and see what we've got. 315, 315, 000, 306. 000, 323, 000, 303, 000, 003. So let's go talk about what this program does quick. I'm going to use reset to get back to the beginning of the program. Uh, the 315, 315, 000 that you see here, 315, 315, 000, call into the Kex monitor ROM to the keyboard input routine. It will return a code for what key is pressed. Uh, literally it returns 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, or, well, it returns it in hex. I just lied. It returns it in octal. We'll see this demonstrated here in a minute. Uh, it then takes that scan code and does an add immediate to 0, and then does an out of the result to port 0, and remember that port 0 is sitting right here port 1 and port 2. So we will be taking the return code for the key, adding it to 0 in this case, and displaying it on the LEDs here. Uh, of course you could change the value that you're adding to to a different value and actually do some addition on the machine. Uh, it then does a jump to 000, 003, which loops the program back around. So let's reset it to get back to the beginning address of the program. Hit go. And hopefully when I press the 1 key here, I will see a 1. So 0 returns 0, 1 returns a 0, 0, 1, 2 a 0, 0, 2, 3 a 0, 0, 3, etc. 4, 5, 6, 0, 0, 7 for the 7 key. The H key returns a 0, 1, 0. The L key is 0, 1, 1. The G key is 0, 1, 2. The step key is 0, 1, 3. The A key is 0, 1, 5. 6 and a 017 for the C key. The Kex monitor doesn't use the A, B, and C keys, but they're there for the user to use for whatever. Reset actually isn't scanned, it is hard hardwired to do a hard reset of the ADA or the 8080 processor. So we can see the program here reading, calling into the Kex monitor, getting the code for and displaying that code back. Let's go ahead and reset. And let's take the byte that we're adding to, and that is at, at address 003. Store that as the high. 004. Store that as the low. And currently we're adding in a 00. And we will add to it a 300. And I'll store that 300. I will reset the program. I will run the program again. And now when I press the one key, it's adding the 300 to the one for the scan key and see that we get the 301, showing that we actually did an addition in the processor. Uh, adding 300 to 002, of course, gives me 3002, etc. And we can see the little program is running. And as I press keys, the value is being added to 300 and displayed on port zero. So there's a quick a uh, demonstration of the Kex monitor. Uh, the source code for the Kex monitor is in the assembly manual uh, along their schematics. Uh, about everything you need to know about the unit to do basic work on it is in the manual. 
Uh, there'll be contact information again at the end of this video if you want to get a CD uh, copy of the manuals. Uh, I can certainly provide those. I used to give them away on my website, but the website is long gone. I think that ends the video. So thank you for suffering through my demonstration of an ENL MMD1, and we'll talk to you in part two. In part two of the ENL MMD1 demonstration video, I have added in the Mini Micro Designer Memory Interface card. Uh, this card is sitting about an inch and a quarter above the original MMD board. It connects to the original MMD board via the expansion connector over here and via four power connectors. Uh, the BNC posts below have the four colored wires coming off the original MMD that are jumpered up to the power inputs uh, on the unit up here. Uh, this expansion card adds slots for additional 1702 EEPROMs. It adds a couple TR1602B UARTs, a couple K of static RAM, a modem circuit, and of course the decoding logic to talk to all of this. Uh, this is an interesting board in that it, uh, for several reasons. First off, it's the only one I've ever encountered in all my years of collecting and repairing ENL equipment. Uh, this particular board came from uh, Green River College here in the state of Washington. There was a switch somebody has manually added over here that appears to switch between 110 and what's scratched in there is 800 baud. Maybe 800 is legitimate baud rate, I don't know. The 110 certainly is. Uh, the outputs of the two UARTs are sitting up here on these connectors. Uh, the unit is capable of 20 milliamp or RS-232 output. Boy, what else to say about it? Uh, it, it it's an interesting add-on for the MMD-1. Let's go ahead and power the MMD-1 up here. The system has come up correctly. I'll go ahead and reset anyhow. It has come up at address 0030000 octal. And we can start stepping through memory. And see that there's random stuff in memory. There it is. Uh, the expansion board has been added on. Uh, the unit is powered up and working. Uh, thank you.